What's going on, everybody? This is Jay. Welcome to another episode of my podcast. Um, I literally just did this entire video, and for some reason, I screwed up my camera somehow, so I gotta do it again. But you know what? That's fine. This is all just a process, this whole podcast thing. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out of my hangover right now, which is nice. I was a little bit, I was kind of like non-functioning. In fact, I think I was still drunk when I woke up this morning. It's only a Friday afternoon, and I'm about to get drunk again in a few hours, so that'll be fun. Um, yeah, you know, you're always a little bit dysfunctional when you're drunk and when you're hungover, but, you know, at least I'm still, or I was still more functional than our president is right now, so that's good. I'm kidding, Joe. I love you, man. <laughs> no, guys, it's just a joke. It's just... Okay. Anyway, um, there's a couple things, two things on the agenda this afternoon. Elon, this is a big one. Elon Musk has taken over Twitter officially this after, well, no, yesterday evening or this morning, one of the two. And I'm going to jump into the Senate debate currently, or not Senate debate, the Senate, <laughs> the Senate race going on. I'm still dysfunctional. Look at that. We got the Senate uh, election upcoming, so I'm going to talk about that a little. There's, there's really nine states that are really up for grabs right now. There's a few that are kind of out of reach, but I'm just going to add them just for the sake of it. And we're going to talk about how close the Senate race really is, how it looks right now. We're going to dive into that. So let's get going. So Elon Musk, to quote him, has freed the bird, or the bird is free, one of the two. He tweeted that um, this morning. He has officially taken over Twitter, and he immediately fired about 75% of Twitter's top executives. So, uh, and you know, we all saw that coming. So Twitter, as you know, is pretty bad for society. There's many crazy, crazy people on there saying crazy things. And as you might, ex might expect, a lot of them get banned. A lot of them get censored. And, you know, sometimes you just have to, that's the problem though with Twitter. Sometimes you just have to deal with those type of people you know, you can't always just censor whoever you want or whatever you want. I think there was uh, a woman that was on, I'm not sure whose podcast was it. She had no answers to the claims that she was getting. She was one of Twitter's top executives on why she was just banning people. And she had no answer for it. So now that Elon Musk is officially on board, we'll see what he does with Twitter. I would expect a lot more of people getting uncensored, a lot more people getting unbanned, people are going to be able to say what they have to say, and I think it's going to be good for Twitter, because sometimes, and yes, I know a lot of these people are insane, and we'll get to that, we'll get to some of those people, but, you know, sometimes you just have to deal with it. I mean, there is a mute button, you don't have to listen to everybody on there, because people are going to say things you don't agree with, people are going to say outrageous, stupid, ridiculous, dumbass things, and some of it's funny, but sometimes you just have to deal with it. So, for example, um... You might be seeing some people back on Twitter, like, say, Jordan Peterson, the Babylon Bee, the libs of TikTok, and maybe even, in fact, you know, not even maybe even, most likely, our former president. Now, listen, okay, just full disclosure here, I'm not a big Trumper. Yes, I know I did vote for him, but the truth be told, now that I look back on it, the way he behaved from November to January of 2020 completely outrageous and ridiculous, all right? But that doesn't mean I still find him not entertaining and not funny because he truly is. I mean, it's just, he says so many funny, outrageous things and I want to see him back on Twitter. In fact, I would say it's almost positive that he's going to be back on Twitter. I mean, he said he might not. He probably, he said something about like Trump being like, oh, he's going to be done with it and everything. But uh, no, nah, I, I think he's coming back to Twitter and I think it's going to be pretty funny. And the media, now the media, for whatever reason, some of them aren't too happy about it. They don't want, because the thing is, the media, they like censorship sometimes. They like people being banned. And I think deep down, in fact, I don't even, I don't even need to say, I think I, I think I know for a fact that deep down, the media loves the fact that Trump is, is most likely going to be back on Twitter because throughout his entire presidency, CNN would just take a look at what he tweeted the day before, and that would cover like 12 hours of content. That was what they would just, they would wake up in the morning, CNN employees, they would look at Trump's Twitter, and that decided what they would cover for the day. That was it. I mean, hell, the, for the last, what, seven, eight years, ever since Trump, Trump announced that he was running for president, that's all, that's all they've talked about. 
I mean, the entire time, I mean, the first 100 days of Trump's presidency, it was just CNN just embellished. And I don't say CNN just does it. It's Fox News, too. It's just them just embellishing about things, blowing them out of proportion. I mean, WikiLeaks literally leaked in 2018 that CNN was blowing the whole Russian scandal way out of proportion. So that's kind of crazy. But my point is, is that the media loves Trump. And that's why that's why he got elected in 2016. I mean, you look at every single time. No way Trump has a chance. Obama with that phone drop. At least I will be a pre- drops the phone, and you know you have Hillary bringing all her celebrities, Beyonce, Jay Z. Um, she brought a lot of celebrities out, and they're all saying you must vote for Hillary Clinton, and so that played right into Trump's hands, and that's why he won. That's one of the reasons why he won in 2016. It is, and then the media just totally were like, "Oh wow, Trump's saying this, Trump's saying that," and throughout his entire presidency. Trump was just like, I have some of the, we have some of the greatest nuclear power ever. Mexicans are this, Mexicans are that, okay? Um, we need to talk about men- we, the gun control is so bad in this country. Look, I love guns, I love guns, but the mental health is really bad. And by the way, I have one of the healthiest mentals this country has ever seen, okay? By the way, I also have some of the, the best firepower this country has ever seen. I actually made the sun... With a flamethrower. It's true. My investigators are looking into it right now. And they have confirmed that it might actually be true. Okay? Anyway. You'll be expecting a lot of that. We saw a lot of that throughout Trump's presidency. He'll be saying things like, like, if, you know what, if he gets nominated again, and then he says, and he happens, God forbid, win, I'm not going to vote for him again. But God forbid wins. He's going to be the only president saying, and the only, only president in the history of this country to win three landslide elections in a row. Okay? Not o- I mean, not only is that not true, but even if it was true, it still wouldn't be true because Roosevelt won four landslide elections in a row. No. <laughs> Never, that, that's just, I don't know. Sorry, I'm having way too fun with the Trump impressions right now. Every time I do an impression of him, I just, I get so carried away because he's so funny. Look, I get it. He's, he's a weirdo. He's a jerk. He's not, it just him as a president was completely insane, but just to see him back on Twitter, that'd be so funny. Um... So, that pretty much sums it up for Elon Musk taking over Twitter. Like I said, you're going to see a lot less a lot less censorship. You're going to see a lot more people unbanned. And, you know, I hope Twitter is maybe a more wholesome place. Yes, I know it's going to be impossible to, you know, block out all the jer- – to, to make it like a perfect place. Because social media will never be like that. But I wish Elon Musk the best of luck in his ownership of Twitter. So. Next topic on the agenda, we have the Senate race. And like I said, there are nine states to pay attention to this coming Tuesday. Not this Tuesday, the following Tuesday. Uh, They are New Hampshire, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. Those are the nine races. And as it looks right now, according to polls, Republicans are gaining some ground. They are gaining some ground. and i got to be honest with you. Initially, I did not think that Republicans were actually, actually had that big of a chance. I shouldn't say that big of a chance, but it seemed like the odds were against them, right? And especially considering with the whole thing that happened with Georgia and them taking over Senate, I thought the momentum was going to be against them going forward. But like I mentioned last week, usually the midterm is a referendum on the president and... Our president, like I said, he's not doing a terrible job, but he's look at his disapproval rating is a lot higher than his approval rating. And it's been like that for well over a year now. A lot of people aren't happy with the job that Joe is doing. So I think you're going to see, look, I, there's a lot of people saying, oh, you know, Democrats may hold on to Senate. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. According to a lot of the polls, yes, plenty of Republicans are still down, but they are really gaining traction right now. The Pennsylvania race is dead even, according to some polls. Some polls say Oz is still down, but he, he's he's certain. I think with, with bleh, but I think within, <laughs> but I think within the last few days uh, after the debate between Fetterman and Oz, um, Fetterman um, did not have that great of a debate performance. I think his health worried a lot of people, so I think a lot more people are. 
uh, voting for uh, – it's definitely – the polls are certainly closing. I think it went he, – he dropped a lead by at least a point since uh, since Monday, Tuesday, whenever the debate was. Now, in Wisconsin, um, Wisconsin and Florida, uh, Republicans, same with North Carolina, Republicans are certainly running away with those. They look like they're going to hold on to those. Um, they have at least a three-point lead going on right now. And it looks like it's going to stay that way. And that's for all the states. I think Rubio has like a seven-point lead. I think Johnson has at least a three-point lead. And what was the other one I just mentioned? Uh, what was it? North Carolina, Florida. North Carolina. Um, I think Bud has at least a three-point lead currently. So, you know, we'll see. Ohio, definitely a close race. J.D. Vance and Tim Ryan have been sort of – They've been changing their leads over the past few months. It's been back and forth, back and forth. So J.D. Vance is currently ahead right now, and some of the polls are saying that he'll maintain that lead until the end of the campaign. Nevada is dead even right now. Okay, it's Adam Laxalt versus Catherine Cortez, Mastio, Mastio, something like that. It seems like Adam Laxalt, he's either ahead or behind by literally like, 0.1 or 2, so it's dead even in Nevada. That one's going to be super close. However, in Laxalt, has been gaining traction. He was down before, and now I think for one of the first times, according to the polls, he's actually taken the lead. Now, in the Arizona race, it seems like Blake Masters has sort of gained some traction on Mark Kelly. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to pull that one out because while the polls are really close, still pretty close, he's still three points down. He did gain some traction, but he still has plenty of time if he wants to uh, win the race in Arizona. He's uh, one of the more uh, Trumpian candidates, if you will. Now, that brings us to Georgia. Georgia is, I think, I, I don't know how Herschel Walker is within a point of Raphael Warnock right now, but he is somehow. I mean, this is a dude that has gone through abortion claims. He claims he's pro-life, but he's had abortions. He comes with a lot of baggage. And literally just the other week pulled out a fake police badge claiming he works with the police and claiming I've never pretended to work with the police while pulling out a fake police badge. And he's somehow down by less than a point. I, I don't know how that's possible, but maybe <laughs> maybe uh, Herschel Walker will win that race. I have no idea. Uh, that brings us to New Hampshire. Now, Maggie Hassan, I think she's been dropping a little bit in the polls, but she might still hang on. We'll have to see. Now, this isn't me Republican wish casting. This is me simply saying that it actually looks good for Republicans right now. And I, you know, I do think there are quite a few Republicans that are good candidates, and there are others that aren't. Herschel Walker, if you couldn't tell. So that I'd say there's about five seats that Republicans uh, could grab, and at that, of course, gives them the majority in the Senate and. If they win the House, that will give them the trifecta, which that hasn't happened since 1995. Like I said last week, you know, that whole they, you know, they took over. It was the Democratic trifecta, and now it's a complete reversal. That hasn't happened in 28 years. And who knows? I think it's actually a better chance of it happening happening this year. So we'll see. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, a little, a little bit, I felt a little bit, not dysfunctional today, but a little bit, I'm still coming out of my hangover, all right? Um, you know, it's late in October, it's getting closer to Halloween, it's Friday, it's a crazy time, I'm a crazy college student, so, yeah, um, but I am having fun with this podcast. Anyway, that's it, um, I'll see you guys later, I'm gonna go get drunk again, peace.